I'm going to be interviewing somebody who divides opinion like few others. Whether he's talking about transgender athletes or vegan sausage rolls or papooses and President Trump, he has opinions and attitudes which inflame Twitter on an hourly basis. But tonight he's getting an award for something different and it's very specific and it's his skewering of British government ministers during this global pandemic holding them to account on behalf of the British people, trying to get answers when they really don't want to give them. He is Piers Morgan, winner of GQ's TV Personality of the Year. And tonight, he's going to be interviewed by me, Piers Morgan. Trump unfollowed you on Twitter. Do you still consider him a friend? Well, I think that Trump, if I saw him, he'd probably be fine. I mean, he's, you know, I've been critical of him before, but he... He came out with this ridiculous notion that we should all be injecting ourselves with bleach. And so I wrote a column for the mail where the headline was, shut the fuck up, Mr. President. Your batshit crazy ideas will get people killed. And he unfollowed me overnight. You're quite supportive of him earlier in the book. I mean, do you regret that now, given his COVID response? No, I've always tried to be fair-minded with Trump. I think journalists' job is not to be partisan about anything, whether it's Brexit, Boris, Trump, coronavirus. I don't think it's a journalist, impartial journalist job to take sides. So with Trump, I always try to be fair-minded. Of the Daily Mail columns, I've written over 100 about Trump and half have been critical and half have been positive until the pandemic. Since the pandemic, 99% negative. When you interviewed Donald Trump for GQ a few years ago, you said in that interview that the one thing Donald Trump does better than anybody in the world is make a ton of money out of property which does beg the question, when you saw that New York Times expose of his tax returns, it appeared to suggest the complete opposite. Trump is the richest pauper I've ever met. If all the stories about Trump having no money are true, how does he have all this stuff? Because I don't have it. So people say that he's got no money. He's stinking rich. It's just a question of how stinking. You praise Trump in the book early on, but you also seem to praise Obama more throughout the book. So which one has been the better president? Well, I think Obama wasn't the saint that people thought he was. He deported three million people, which nobody on the liberal side ever either knows or seems to care about, far more than Trump's deported. Um, he dropped more bombs in one calendar year than any post-war president, doesn't get mentioned. He kept Guantanamo Bay open despite campaigning originally to get it closed immediately. So I never saw Obama as this saintly figure. I agree with him about a lot more things than I agree with Trump about. But Trump, I don't think, is the devil that people perceive him as either. He's not the new Hitler. And when you start using these extremes about either of them, then I think you're mischaracterizing them. You know, Trump has been at war less than Barack Obama. It's just a fact. Liberals don't seem to care about that. Come on, spit it out, answer the question. Um, I just, I've never been someone who tells Americans how to vote. And I think the question about who's been the better president, history will be the judge. Trump, until the pandemic, was actually having a reasonably successful presidency. I never thought Obama had a particularly successful presidency, and in particular over issues like gun control. Oddly, Trump has done more about gun control, and he loves guns, than Obama, who professed to hate them. So overall, Obama's more my kind of president uh, and would be somebody, if I was able to vote, I'd vote more for his politics than Trump's, but it's in the end down to the Americans. You've waged this huge war in the book on wokeness. You ever caught yourself virtue signaling? I think everyone falls into this trap of virtue signaling. You know, you get these things that do the rounds on social media and I've stopped doing most of them. And one example was the black square that was on Instagram, you know, go blackout for the day as a tribute to George Floyd. And I'd spent the whole morning debating real issues about racial inequality on Good Morning Britain. And I was like, I don't really feel the need to do a black square, actually. I don't think it achieves very much. I saw all these people for one day blacking out their Instagram and then immediately going back to their bikini snaps. I'm not sure they made any difference. So I think virtue signaling, the problem with it is it never really achieves very much. Come on, do you really think that vegan sausage rolls and papooses are an abhorrent stain on society, as you write in the book? I do. I think anyone that... And if you wear a papoose and eat a vegan sausage roll, there's something inherently wrong with you. Have you even read my book? 
Come on. Let me give you a copy. Okay. I'll try reading it. Cheers. Of course I've read it. It's a fantastic book. Yeah. How many women have you slept with? That was an intrusive question. A gentleman would never, ever tell. Thankfully, most of the people I interviewed for GQ did. More than 10? A gentleman would never say. More than 50? A gentleman would never say. Do you have a criminal record? Or have you ever had a criminal record? I do not have a criminal record. If I, unbelievably, I've really? never even been arrested. It's a fact that startles my friends. When was the last time you broke the law? Last time something illegal was uh, speeding. I think 34 and a 30. Yeah, I didn't see that as the biggest crime I've ever committed. <clears throat> Have you taken any substances? Um, the uh, honest answer is yes, in my early days. How rich are you? I'm certainly well off. More than five million? Yes. More than 20? Mm, probably. Uh, look, I'm very, I'm, I'm very lucky. I've been in a high paying job for a long time. I'm very well off and never have I been more aware of how lucky I am in this year. So. Who would you vote for in the next UK election? Boris Johnson or Sir Keir Starmer? I would definitely not vote for Boris Johnson. So if it was a choice of him or anybody, frankly, I'd vote for anybody. Um, I, he has been a total disaster as a leader. I voted for him on one issue. I couldn't vote for Jeremy Corbyn. Um, and on Boris, I felt at least he's going to deliver Brexit. And I was a Remainer who thought that democracy depended on delivering the result of the referendum. So I, I couldn't. I would rather shoot myself than vote for Boris. And people know my views on guns. So. Was it the guns campaign that caused you to leave CNN? I think the problem with CNN was I was running up a hill the whole time against a lot of people who love guns. And I just didn't want to hear any more from a Brit. I remember that they drove out the Brits with guns as they never hesitated to remind me. So I think in the end, it was a bit of a culture clash, yeah. Although I'd done, you know, I'd done 1,300 shows at CNN. Um, really? Which is, last time I checked, 1,300 more than any other British broadcaster on primetime TV out there in the last 30 years. So my failure out there is a relatively moot point. <clears throat> what did your guns campaign in America actually achieve? Sadly, all my gun campaigning did was probably sell more guns. I think they looked at this British guy on TV, telling them to give up their guns and went and bought more of them. Um, it's a cultural thing, you know. It was described to me by Jay Leno, the American talk show host. He said, trouble appears, it's like you going to Germany and telling them to stop speeding on the autobahn. You know, the smart crowd might agree with you, but most Germans will be thinking, we don't want to hear this, thanks, and we definitely don't want to hear it from someone with your accent. What's the best advice you've ever given your kids? Biggest life lesson I tell my kids is find a job that you're passionate about then it's not a job. If you don't, you'll be bored for 50% of your entire life. So find a job that gets you up in the morning and you can't wait to get stuck in. That, that's the secret to life. What's been your biggest mistake? I've made a lot of mistakes in my career. The biggest mistake is not learning from them. So I think the, the key thing I always felt was, I think it was Mars the confectioners used to celebrate mistakes in their new chocolate bar lines, not the successes. I don't know what they mean. Um, I mean, people think it's probably the thing that got me fired from the mirror, but I never saw that as a mistake. Do you ever have sleepless nights about that incident? No, funny enough, I met uh, General Sir Nick Carter, who's the head of our armed forces now, um, several years ago in, on the northern French battlefields, and he sat me down at the park bench and told me I was right to publish what I'd published, which is good enough for me. The allegations we made against the soldiers we made them against were true. So whatever the provenance of the pictures, they were true. That story was true. <clears throat> What's the thing in your career that you're most proud of? The thing I'm proudest of, I think when the Daily Mirror won Newspaper of the Year after 9-11, when every paper threw the kitchen sink at one story and they had mostly better resources, better staff, you know, more money to spend. And we won every major award that year at the British Press Awards. That was, I remember the moment they gave us Newspaper of the Year, it felt like a total validation of everything that we'd been doing on that story, which I thought was, at the time, great journalism, but you need other people to tell you that as well. When was the last time you spoke to Rupert Murdoch? 
Last time I spoke to Rupert Murdoch, I had dinner with him in Los Angeles in February at his home. I just remember it was Joan Collins, Angelica Houston, Jerry Hall, me, and it was a hell of a night. Is Fox News a force for good in the media? I watch Fox News in the same way I watch MSNBC and CNN in America. And honestly, I think it's hard now, and I'm amazed I say this about my former employers at CNN, to see who is more partisan. They're all partisan. CNN and MSNBC skew left, and Fox News skew right. And if you watch all of them, you get a pretty well-rounded view of what's going on. If you watch any one of them on their own, I think your view gets skewed in a very partisan way. What's the most hurtful thing anyone's ever said about you? Um, I don't really care what people say about me. Honestly, I know people think I must do, but I really don't. I just see it as a good chance to wage a new feud. What about the physical description by Charlie Brooker? Charlie Brooker has called me all sorts of disgusting things. Most of them are fairly undeniable. What about today's tabloid press do you not agree with? I mean, I think that the tabloid press in this country has always had a bad rap. It, has, it is a thunderous, passionate beast. But again, depending which one you're reading, they skew different politics, whether it's the Sun, the Mail, the Mirror. They're all different. You've got a good choice. The thing about our country, we have a democracy driven by a very vibrant free press. The problem for the tabloids is they don't have anything like the readership they used to have or the revenue streams, which is why they're trying to do it online. Of those, dailymail.com and Mail Online, they're the ones who've really cleaned up. Um, and I would say that because I write for them, but they do have the biggest audience and they do have uh, the biggest revenue stream. That's the future. What celebrity do you most admire and why? Um, I like celebrities who are the same in public and on camera as they are when you meet them over dinner. Gary Lineker is a good example. He's a good mate of mine, and he's somebody that he's exactly what he seems. There's no side to him. So it's people like that. Amanda Holden, exactly the same. Exactly what you'd hope she'd be in private as she is in public. Susanna Reid, you know, authentic people. I don't mind who you are, as long as you're authentic. Donald Trump, in his own way, is authentic. Been, he's been a good friend to me over the years. He's been an awful president for the last 12 months. Um, but he's, he's been an awful president for the last seven or eight months. But he's authentic. I like authentic people. They haven't got to even be perfect or nice or anything. They just have to be true to themselves. Does authenticity trump morals, then? I think everyone has flawed morals, particularly those who spout on about how moral they are, in my experience. The more virtuous they sound, especially on social media, the more awful they tend to be in real life. What will the first line of your obituary say? First line of my obituary will be, he didn't die wondering. Come on, after all this, what actually annoys you the most? I genuinely do hate vegan sausage rolls. <laughs> I tried eating one, it made me vomit. They make me come out in wheels. Also, they represent everything I detest about woke culture. Nobody actually likes vegan sausage rolls. They go and buy them at exorbitant prices and do damage to themselves more than a McDonald's cheeseburger because they think it makes them look virtuous. They can be a vegan for the day. Shut up. Well, Piers, I'm delighted to tell you you are GQ's TV Personality of the Year for 2020. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, but I sort of feel we should be sharing this, shouldn't we? I mean, it's as much as you as me. We should really be sharing it, shouldn't we? All right, then.